All right, in this lesson, we're gonna walk you through a percentage of bad debt example. So we're gonna walk you through an understanding of what we're trying to do as well as what that journal entry is going to look like. So let's take a look at a review of what we already know about the percentage of bad debt. So we know that we're gonna use this equation, which we take a credit sales per month or credit sales per period really, and we multiply it by the bad debt loss rate to get us our bad debt expense. Once we have that, we'll go ahead and do the journal entry to book the bad debt expense and put money into the cookie jar or the allowance for bad debt. So credit sales, we know that we're looking for just the credit sales, not the cash portion of the sales. So that's what we need to think about when we're looking at the problem. In addition, we know that we need to find the bad debt loss rate. It should be given to us. If it's not given to us, there should be some information that helps us calculate it out. Okay. So let's take a look at the example prompt here. Assume company A has a credit sales, had credit sales of 250,000 and a cost of goods sold of 150,000 for the period. Company A uses the percentage of credit sales method and estimates that 1% percent of credit sales would result in uncollectible accounts. Before the end of the period adjustment is made, the allowance for doubtful accounts has a credit balance of $250. What amount of bad debt expense would the company rec record as an end of the period adjustment and the journal entry associated with the bad debt expense? So we can calculate what the bad debt expense would be just based on the information here. So the first thing that we need to look for is the net credit sales. So we see that the net credit sales here is $250,000. So we're gonna take $250,000 and we're gonna multiply that by our bad debt loss rate. In this problem, they do give us the bad debt loss rate, which is 1%. So we're gonna multiply this $250,000 by 1% or in decimal form 0 0.01, and that's giving us $2,500. So $2,500 would be our bad debt expense, all right? So if we move on to the journal entry, we have to create the journal entry. So here we would debit bad debt expense, And we would debit that because we're increasing the expense, we're increasing it by $2,500. And then we're gonna credit the allowance, the cookie jar account. So the allowance for bad debt gets credited for $2,500. And we said that the allowance for bad debt is a contra asset. And because it's a contra asset, it works opposite of an asset, but it's still kind of in the asset category. So an opposite of the asset would mean that an increase in the contra asset would be a credit rather than a debit, because normally an asset, when we increase, it's a debit. We are going to credit the account because we're increasing the cookie jar. We're putting money into the cookie jar. So we have to credit the account. So we're gonna credit the allowance for doubt, uh, allowance for bad debt and debit our bad debt expense for $2,500. So that is our percentage of bad debt expense example. Um, really easy to calculate once we have all the numbers. Again, the only difficulty is that maybe you have to calculate the estimated bad debt loss rate, um, Other than, or uh, they don't give you net credit sales, they give you total sales, but they do give you your cash sales, or maybe they give you a percentage of that total sales is credit sales, and then you have to kind of calculate that out. But that's kind of the only thing that would make this a little bit more difficult. So hope you enjoyed this lesson, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patricklymsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.